Seven Ocean Whiskey, Denmark. Japan America Seven Ocean Whiskey, Denmark. Oceania contest. So I've got a new radio here from Redivus. This is the Alluance, Alluance, Alluance HS4. It is a 10 meter radio. Uh, it's quite an interesting rig. Um, one thing that I've noticed, I've done a couple of reviews on radios such as this. I've done one on an Anytone AT uh, quadruple five, I think, and then also a striker radio. And a lot of you guys in the comments have noted that it has been missing something. And this one has it and that is CW. So it does have a CW mode, and over the back of the radio here, there is uh, an option here to put in a Kia, a CW key into there. And one side of my paddle doesn't work, so I think just a straight Kia will work. And you can see there it is transmitting. You have to go into the menus to adjust the volume of that uh, CW side tone. You can't do that on the front panel, and I think that that is number do, 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 do. there you go csu which is set at 31 by default so i need to go all the way through these menus oh and then i went past it csu let's turn that down a little bit not sure if we can get a that's better so So it's a little bit, I mean, I'm not the best judge of character for CW, but it's, uh, I've just been playing around with it here on the, the bench and just, I've noticed a couple of things about it. Um, just turned it up there, just listening to uh, a contest station here at the moment on 10 meters. One thing about these radios is they have this channel selector. They don't really have like a tuning dial. It's not like something where you can go, you know, spin the dial up and down, you know, like these kind of radios where you've got the tuning dial on them to make it easier. But this one doesn't have that. It's got the channelized selector. And on this radio, uh, the channels go up and down in five kilohertz steps. Um, well, kind of five kilohertz steps, I guess. I'm just, sometimes it can be a little bit erratic, I've noticed. And tuning around, can be a little bit frustrating. See, I don't know why it's gone from 470 to 6, 5, 465, and then 466, and then back to 463. It's an interesting way of doing it. Uh, they also have the clarifier here, so you can actually tune in more granular steps, but even that can be a little bit of a problem. So. I mean, listening on even frequencies like this, you can hear that Japanese station. If I go up here in frequency, there's another station further up. So here I am on 491. If I want to tune him in, I need to use the clarifier knob and it can be a little bit of hard work sometimes. So there we go. There's a function menu in here, which all of this is sort of shown here in the manual of what everything means. You kind of need to sit down and really study all of this to understand what it all means. I mean, it's all here. It's just that, for instance, if I want to go and change the frequency step of this clarifier, I've got to go into the function menu here. And I think it's, STP, STP, set on 100 kilohertz. I can go 10, uh, sorry, 10 hertz, 100 hertz, one kilohertz, five kilohertz, 10 kilohertz. So if you wanna adjust your step, you can't really do that on the fly really quickly. You have to go into the menu to be able to adjust it up and down. One thing that I think these radios are really good for is for AM and FM. So, um, I've listened to the FM on this radio and it's actually pretty good. It sounds really nice. 
uh, and also to transmit audio as well. This is the microphone that comes with it. Um, it's just a standard microphone, you know, it's not nothing really special. It's a lightweight microphone that you see with these sort of Chinese radios. Uh, but one thing that I noticed was in FM, if I go up to the repeater portion here, and our repeater's on 29680. And if you go, if we go into the menus, there is an option here to set a CTCSS tone. Here we go, T transmit CTCSS. I've got it set on number 11 at the moment. If I go back to the manual, the manual actually doesn't have anywhere here to show where that, there we go, transmit CTCSS to folders off, but it actually doesn't have anywhere in the manual to show what numbers are what tones. So I kind of had to do it by trial and error. Our repeater uses a 91.5 hertz sub-audible CTCSS tone. And it's one thing that the manual is, is missing. It's missing that um, option to tell you exactly what tone you are using. That's all good. You can sort of get around that. The other thing though that it is missing is it's missing a repeater function. There's no way that I've found, and you might be able to drop something in the comments if you've ever used this radio or if you have seen it before. I need to transmit on 29580 megahertz, not 28680 megahertz to activate the repeater. So um, I can't use it without the minus 100 split. So. I haven't seen if there's any way that I can actually do split at all. So I did want to know if the programming software enabled me to be able to select a different transmit and receive frequency, which it looks like it does here in the software. And this is directly from their website. If I go to the setup, I select COM10 and then I go to read from the radio. It says here, reading from the radio. Uh, I plugged it directly in using the cable that they've supplied. This is the software downloaded directly from their website. And once it gets to 100%, I seem to get this error, which is a runtime error 6, overflow, I hit OK, and the software closes. So I've got no real way to actually test that either. So one thing I can do is I can do an audio test. Let's go down here to the repeater input. The K7HH testing 5421. Now, when I did that test, you, I couldn't switch it quick enough to be able to tell what the audio report was back. So what I'll do is I'll have a listen on my other radio here and I'll unmute that when I've done my test. Okay, 7HH testing, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, 7HH testing, one, two, three, four, five. So the audio sounds reasonable on FM. Uh, we can hear some stations on sideband. Quite a few contest stations happening at the moment. So I don't really want to go and try and get audio reports from contest stations. So look at that. Why is it going 13 kilohertz? Oh, there we go. I still don't know what's going on there. See, why is it jump? It's jumping all over the place. It's gone from there to there. Is that because of where I've got the clarifier? Like, because the only way that I could tell to be able to change frequency steps or change frequencies properly, more, you know, with more granularity, is to use the clarifier not this channel step, because this seems to do it in five kilohertz steps. <sighs> I guess it's just one of these things with these Chinese radios. I'm not used to it, I'm used to a, a tuning knob. So here are some of the specs of the radio. One of the good things about it is that it does quite put out quite a bit of power. So on AM and CW, it's up to 12 watts. On FM, it'll go up to 40 watts, which is very good. Be good if I could actually use it on a repeater though. And uh, sideband will go up to 35 watts, and I've tested this on my 
power meter and they are all accurate. So the side of the radio is where your microphone plugs in. It is one of these four pin mic jacks, which I really like these, them using this because they're much more robust than those RJ12 type connectors. There is also, the radio comes with some of the brackets, mic bracket and other brackets that you need for mounting. Here's a mobile bracket as well that you can screw up underneath the, the bench or you can put it in your car if you want to put this in the vehicle. This also comes with a programming cable. Um, decent size heatsink here on the back. It's an SO239 antenna connector. There's that data port for programming, the CW key, external speaker, and also power connector as well. And for those that can see it there, there is the FCC ID 2 Alpha 3 OSC Oscar Hotel Sierra 4. So I just popped the top cover off to have a look to see what's inside. I did not expect it to be uh, upside down, but basically that's what the bottom of the board looks like. I guess we can have a look and see what the solder quality is like which is not too bad. It looks fairly reasonable. There's nothing sort of standing out as absolutely terrible. Let's take the other cover off so I can see what the top side of the board looks like. And it's, uh, you know, it's, it's reasonably good, actually. It's not uh, too bad. I don't see anything that is sort of super standing out. I noticed that they pot a couple of these things, like they pot the crystal and put this, uh, this glue on the board. It's certainly a lot around the power power section here. I don't quite really know why they end up doing that. Uh, but everything else looks looks okay. And we looked at the bottom side of the board. The bottom side of the board looked okay. So as far as like build quality, I think that it's not too bad. Um, there's obviously a massive amount of space. Like look at the size of this uh, radio case. Like So the board's this big. There's about this much where there is absolutely nothing in it. They could literally have moved the front of this back here and made a radio half the size. Um, the MOSFETs or the power amplifier outputs there are bolted directly to the heatsink, so that's good. Um, probably wouldn't handle sort of FM continuous duty for an awful long time, but um, it should work for single sideband. And, and around the back, if I can show you there, that is the front panel display board that they've got there so i guess that's a, a bit of extra but again they could have just moved this back and made the radio a lot shorter so these channelized well they're, they're advertised as ham radios but these channelized radios are pretty much copying cb radios and they've just put in sort of the amateur 10 meter um, sometimes 12 meter functionality in them by just using this one tuning knob here um, like i just showed earlier now, my advice for the companies that are making these is just do away with this channelized tuning knob situation because that's fine in CB where CB actually have channelized channels, whereas with Amateur, we can sort of be operating in between those channels as I showed earlier with those contest stations, and it took quite a bit to be able to try and tune them in. It was a little bit frustrating. So do away with that. Put a proper tuning knob in here so that you can actually tune up and down the band properly rather than these um, band selector knobs as you can see there in the middle and these tuning knobs and i think you'll be on to a winner um, if you're just operating a couple of frequencies maybe you just want a radio just for the call channel we use a call channel of 28 490 megahertz here in vk um, or if you just want to sort of monitor some simplex frequencies monitor some repeaters i mean you're going to be a little bit hard pressed to be able to operate through them or you just want to operate on simplex then um, it's a good little radio for that as well if you want to learn more about this hs4 then there is a link in the description below and i've done a couple of other videos on similar type of radios i've done a striker and also an anytone radio and they'll appear on the screen if you want to watch the review videos of those